<coughs> yeah, I'll just start the video by coughing, Danny. Hey, YouTube. I know it's been ages since I uploaded a video, but there's been so much going on in my life for a man who's relatively still that I was living it, you know? I haven't got time to be recording it because I'm, living, I'm falling forwards with my face on fire. I'm living my life as it presents itself in front of me. And so what better is there to do but live in the day instead of saying, oh, this is happening. I'm like, I'm following my nose, you know? <clears throat> Can't remember where we were up to. I was looking for a car. I was looking for a house, such and such, something like that. Uh, fuck me, that was fucking July. July the 4th, the landlord came to visit me. It's now what, September the 14th or something? What is it? Yeah, Monday, September the 14th. I'm still in the same house here in, in Alaro. Like, I haven't heard a fucking peep from the landlord all this time, and I'm constantly living in fear that he's gonna turn up at some point and be like, you motherfucker, get out of my house. But no, I've not heard anything, so I'm just like not rocking the boat and keeping quiet. Um, activity happened. Uh, Danny's got to move, Danny's got to find a house. I wrote an advert, put it on the internet, boom, found a house two hours later. Perfect, fucking lovely, out towards the sea. Uh, went to visit the house, it was perfect. It was the ivory tower, it was in a cafinka, there was horses, there was a swimming pool, 360 degree terrace, like amazing stuff. Then on, so I went to see it on the Saturday, then on the Sunday, my friend's like, I'm gonna sell you my car, 350, 300, 300, 50 euros I'm like boom here we go it's all falling into place this is where I'm supposed to go but then I got I got stuck in mud like everything just stopped turning like like it, like the car just didn't happen all through for the next two weeks um, and I recognized it I recognized that I was being held and so if anything it really did affirm with me that I am in the right place this is where I'm supposed to be I'm not allowed to have a car because I will make a run for it trying to escape myself and this constant sickness of decay and just trying to flee somewhere so they're holding me back so I'm held it but if anything it's good because I know that I'm in the right place and I know that this is where I'm supposed to be and so so I celebrate it and, um, and I, I am in the right place I'm totally a part of this community I'm like right in I'm like right in the heart of it really as a ghost that I am but I'm right in it uh, so it's good um, the radical story of how everything changed is uh, that I met a woman too. Like, yeah, I met a woman, you guys. Like, um, and it's rare for me to meet someone that I feel that I can, that I'm connected with because I'm never looking for external characteristics in someone like, oh, she's pretty, or da da da, shalala, none of that. It's all about like uh, an internal feeling, a sense of intimacy with that person, immediate intimacy, you know, because I'm very, very guarded and I've got a lot of walls up and although I can pour myself out of my face and that's no problem, no one really gets to get to Danny on the inside. Uh, but when you meet the right one, there are no walls and that person, you can just feel like it's like the two inner children just sat there talking. Anyway, I found this, guys, and I'm like, yeah, like, super cool. But I'm not in any rush to kind of develop anything beyond the afternoon and enjoy the beauty of it. Because really, like, there's a lot of people that treat love as like a prize, like it's something that you've got to get and you win and you hold and you keep it like that. But it's not. It's only ever how it makes you feel in the day. And wow, have I returned to a certain sense of myself as, as a human being by re trying to rediscover the lover within me, you know, having to present myself as a lover to a certain extent. And it's good. And we nurture each other and we sit there for four, five, six, seven hours like we've known each other forever. So that's all very exciting. However, it's totally, it's totally messed up. Like, like we're from different planets, like we're from totally different planets, like, like, we're the, like we're the same people, but completely opposite. And it's a bit weird and it's a bit of a challenge because although we feel very comfortable together, she's in no, she doesn't, first of all, she doesn't want a partner. She doesn't find me attractive. And she's got a completely different attitude towards sex and love that I have, like the opposite. Like, as you guys know me, I'm celibate and monogamous and want to create something solid and stable and that, and I'm not interested in anything else, whereby she's got a very modern sex life where, you know, it's just sex and you just like, <laughs> okay. So I kind of courted this woman for a month and it was very, very lovely and beautiful. But ultimately, I know in the back of my mind that she is still 
on the Tinder and eventually she will for fuck somebody and then I'm going to walk out bra- heartbroken because I'm emotionally investing myself in this level of intimacy and so I backed out, I was like look I've I got to get out of this before I get hurt um, which is okay um, so I've just got to drop it and walk away like, like just leave it because what the fuck like what so so she puts me in the friend zone right because she wants me in the friend zone and i get that because like it's like i'm pouring out all my love in a very natural flow and she's receiving all that love and it makes her feel good and nice and so she wants to maintain that in her life but she's not willing to open up and be in a vulnerable space like that herself yet like i'm patient and i'll wait for as long as you need to be to open up into a vulnerable space like i'm super cool with that um uh and it takes time so ultimately because she doesn't want to face that challenge of having to open up and be in a vulnerable space she just puts me in the friend zone she just wants me to come by every week or whatever every few days sit there for the afternoon and be loving her which is ultimately what's happening i'm sat there loving you and she likes that but and so that's why she wants to put me in the friend zone and so she put me in the friend zone early on when she met me and I got out of it guys like and you should think about this too any of you gamers who are soft feathers like that who want to give your love away to Yang like you've you've got to you've got to own your own value like the only commodity I have is all my loving grace and so like if I don't value that then nobody else will and I'll just be used I'll just be put into a box of use and she's not using me you understand the reasons why she would do that because it's difficult for her so I get that um so yeah um well we'll see how it goes at the end of the day at the moment I just have to step away from her and stay away from it because like any further time that I spend with her is more I'm emotion gonna get emotionally involved with her. And and she's if she's not playing the game according to my rules, which is like I'm basically saying, Hey, look, lady with a modern sex life, if you wanna be with me, then you've got to be celibate <laughs> and she doesn't even wanna be with me. Like, well, she does. I know she does, but she's resisted herself. So whatever, like, super cool. But it is very exciting. Now, if she did, if if I did allow her to put me in that friend zone, then what do I get? What do I get is nothing. I get nothing out of it. Like, like, and I, I can't accept that anymore. I have to. I have to take something out of a relationship too. And I'm not asking for a lot. I just want to be loved. I just want to love and be loved in return. And believe me, like it's a very, very difficult thing to do when you're dealing with very, very high-end feminine and masculine energies. Because whilst it's like absolutely natural for me to pour all of my love out to something that takes all that love, it's very difficult for it to come back the other way. Like it's very difficult for her to love me, and very, very difficult for me to allow myself to receive. That. super challenging um it it seems that <clears throat> it seems that uh like by spending time with me she's absolutely more herself because i'm talking directly to who she really is uh, and so she is more like herself and by standing more in herself in the afternoon spent the more time that she spends in herself the more she can see the illusion for what it is the illusion of ego that she's got herself cast under um but you know, I'm not out here to repair anybody. I'm not out here to try to to make some somebody who doesn't fit me fit me. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Danny? Like, what is it with this lady in the tramp story? Because she is a lady again. She's a princess again with the princess and the tramp story, Danny. Like, what is it that I didn't get out of the princess, the ongoing lady in the tramp story that I keep living throughout my life? What is it that I don't get that I need to get? Because it just keeps coming back around, and that's what I'm attracted to because there's still something that I haven't quite got. Anyway, by by being like, she's a bit of a rogue princess. And in a way, she answered a lot of questions to the story with her presence in my life because I could see it all again. The same fucking story all unfolding. Danny, 
only values himself as much as a dog and so he, the thing that he becomes attracted to can only ever see him as a dog. A dog that comes in in the afternoon, gives her all the love, makes her feel good and then takes nothing, dude. And I can see it again and I'm like, no, I'm going to resist it this time. I'm not going to allow myself to fall into that dynamic. I have to define my own value. And I know what my value is because the value of all my loving grace is the, it's the most valuable thing in the world. Like people don't assign any value to it like it's like just my character or whatever when really it's the most valuable thing in the world and I know that and so I'm Prince Standard when it comes to my soul I am Prince Standard and anybody who wants to really receive that love deserves I deserve respect you know it's difficult because you see me here on the earth and I'm a dog dude I'm a dirty dog like like I'm relatively homeless tramp um, and so if I allow her to, to see me as that, then that's what it'll be. But she knows that the soul disco says a different story in the, in the, in her heart of hearts. Fuck, it's wild, dude. Like, what's it, like, I, I, like, you know, I've just got to step away from it because I, I, more than anything, it's just lessons for myself again, like, with this shit. Um... So if I step away from this, then maybe I will find someone who can truly love me instead of just falling into the same trap again of just pouring my love out to someone. So yeah, resist the friend zone, my friends. Like, that's, that's, that's the best way to go. And if they don't want to be your partner, then fucking walk away and go and give all your loving grace to somebody else and someone who will see the value of that because it's the most valuable thing in the world. So don't settle for anything less. So yeah, so in the meantime, whilst all that's been going on, which has been super exciting, it's, it's, I've, been, I've been riding off of the wave. Because when I wake up in the morning and I've had this love interest in my life, this just a purely philosophical principle of having a love interest in my life, makes me feel good. And so without a need to kind of push it any further, I've kind of been living off of the good vibe that it's been creating in me and trying to help make that raise my vibration, so to speak. Um, I accept myself much much clearer uh, in term in terms of like how I am and what I am in terms of the puzzle piece that I am of the community uh, of the body of Christ that was that is spread out among the community. I am a lover, um, and if that's what I need to ground myself, and that's what I need to ground myself is a partner, love, and relationship on the earth. I don't really need anything else. There was never anything else that was interesting apart from love. Um, and so, <coughs> at least I know what I want out of life. Like a man who's had no desire for a long time. Yeah, it's just to have a loving relationship. And that's not to build a family or buy a house or anything like that. It's just to share in, in some good loving grace for a while. But it's got to come back the other way. <sighs> Let it go, Danny. She's obviously in my mind, you know. But like, I've got to just like walk away, like can do that I've learned that over the past years I've learned the power of walking away and it's like the only power I've got is to take my face out of the situation because if I leave my, my face in the situation I'm just gonna in all my light giving her all my love um, anything else would be cynical to sit there cynically shut the fuck up and go on then you carry the water like like that's me being in meanness and I don't have to live in that <laughs> this video all about her, Danny? Is that what it is? Let me think. No. This video's about decay. It's all fucking decay, guys. It's all decay. Like, like, I've been living in a state of decay since September 2017, when I went to Santiago de Compostela in the north of Spain. That was when my real slip into decay began, and it's all been decay ever since then. And anytime anything looks like it might be the end of decay, and it might be like time to build something good again, ah, ah, decay, go back to yourself. And it's been that way for you since September 2017. You might think that's a long time, but no, we're in for the long game here because this decay lasts for seven years. I started in September 2017 because I am butter, baby. I have no fucking resistance. I'm literally got no choice but to just live, live with it because I'm falling forward with my face on fire. Does everybody have to go through their own apocalypse? Yes, they do. Everybody else, ha everybody has to live their own seven years of decay. When it starts for them, is up to them and up to their story. Um, but all their life will fall apart. 
slowly but surely and they will be resistant towards it they've got more resistance than i ever had i'm fuck i ain't got any resistance um so it's all about decay and which way the world's going to go it's difficult for people to imagine that the world is an esoteric wash from your mind and your experience experiential connection with that and that that the apocalypse is your own version of it the decay of your own fucking life over a seven year period or however long you resist it for if you never really stop resisting it then you're gonna die and so you've got to either go through this process to move on up or you're gonna get dragged down with the ship so whereby the majority of this video really is about um un uh, unrequited love <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, the ultimate principle of it is that we're all living in times of decay and this will go on till 2024. Fuck this shit. I hope my cycle finishes sooner. I think my cycle will finish sooner than most because I've been living in it for longer than for the most. The fucking stripping away of everything that is that was left of my ego. Now, we'll go right back around to the lover story. There's something I didn't get. Victim mentality is one of them, Danny. Fuck that shit. Anyway, 15 and a half minutes, 16 minutes of Danny chatting away. The YouTube channel is back in action. Do I still intend to go outside and go to the beach? Yeah, I'd love to. I can't be trusted with a car because, you know, um, because I'll make a run for it. <laughs> and so I have to be hobbled. Um, I thought that me and the not-girlfriend could have made the YouTube channel together. It would have given us something to do as dates, going daytime dating, going around. I'm yin, she's yang. We could have fucking bossed it on here, on the internet. She didn't even have to say anything. She would have been like Victoria Beckham. Just stood there like that in her clothes because uh, she's my opposite. <laughs> But wow, like it, we could have really made dynamite, you know? You, you all would have watched us then if she was just stood next to me and I do all the talking, believe me. Um, but uh, Danny, needs, Danny needs to feel it the other way around. Um, yeah, like, anyway, I just got a text message, that's why I got distracted. <laughs> Um, big love to you all. I hope you're all doing well out there. Um, I hope you've, your own version of decay is going okay and that you can learn the lessons that you need to learn as you go through it with minimal resistance so it doesn't keep coming around in heavier ways because there ain't no time left, baby. There ain't no time left not to get this and so it's going to become obtuse. I love you all. Um, kisses. Bye.